Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're gonna be covering how to count the number of records returned from a get element in a Salesforce flow. This is for those times whenever maybe you're gonna be you know, uh, getting all the contacts related to an account, all the cases related to account, things like that. And you need to be able to count the records returned. I'm going to show you the most efficient way to do this, along with a secondary way that you can do it that's not as efficient. And I just want to uh, demonstrate that for you. But if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, putting out new Salesforce content all the time. And let's jump into this video. Now in today's video, I've already pre-built the flow out um, ahead of time. That way I can walk you through exactly how this works. This is a little different than the other styles of videos I've done in the past where I build it um, in front of you. I wanted to spend more time walking through the explanation with this and we're gonna do some additional flow build to show a use case for this as well. Um, so if you like this kind of style of having an already pre-built and me doing the explanation, leave a like, lets me know you like this style of video. So what we have here is we have a record triggered flow that I've created and we're going to go in here and look, I've got it set up for the account object and the trigger is for when an account uh, uh, record is created or updated and I've specified no entry criteria on this. Then what the flow does next is it gets the related contacts. Um, based on the record that triggers the flow. So I have the contact object selected at the top. And what I've done is I want to get contact records where the account ID on the contact equals the record that triggered the flow account ID. The way I did that is I scrolled down and you can see this is the record that triggered the flow. You can select that. And then if you scroll down, you're going to see account ID or you can just type in ID and you'll be able to find it that way relatively quickly. And you can click out of the little box and it will fill in the account ID. Now, I don't have these sorting in any sort of way and I'm storing all records right here and I'm storing all the fields just to be easy. Now, what I've done so far is the flow has been triggered. We've got the related contacts to the account. Now, I want to count the number of records returned, contact records returned. So the first thing you're going to need to do is create a resource uh, to be able to store these values in. So I've got one created and I'll show you how I created it. This is a variable called count of contacts. It is a number type with no decimal place and a default value of zero. And I set it for available for input. So this is where I'm going to assign the value or assign the number of records returned. I want to add this to it. So I'm going to show you how I created this. So I just click new resource variable, and then you give it an API name of whatever you would like. And then under data type, you're going to select number. And then from here, it automatically defaults to two decimal places. Just change that to zero. And you're going to want to set a default value as well in here, just put a zero and make sure you set it available for input. And that's how you create that formula resource or excuse me, that variable resource. Now you're going to add an assignment block into your flow and you're going to configure it as such. This is going to be the variable is count of contacts. That is the um, little collection variable I've created and under operator, because this is a number type variable, you actually have the option of equals count. And what that saying is, is this will equal the count of the number of records returned from contacts from get related contacts. So what you're doing is you set that value to the uh, get records element. This could be get accounts, get contacts, get cases, whatever your use case is what you're going to set that to. Now, we are actually done. I've already saved my flow as test flow, as you can see in the top left. I'm going to debug this flow. I have uh, an account called Edge Communications here, and I'll show you that account. It has two uh, contacts associated to it. So we're going to go ahead and debug this baby. And I'll save and debug because I made a thanks. I made some changes, but I didn't. Um, we'll pretend like this has been created. And when you select an account, I'm going to select Edge Communications, and I'm going to hit Run. As you can see, it completed successfully and ran all the way through. But on your right side of your debug, if you look at this assignment add account, you can see the count of contacts is two. 
because we were able to successfully find all the related contacts and then it added them up. It added them to our uh, collection variable. So the flow is working as expected. This is a really cool, uh, cool and useful tool because the scenario is maybe you're trying to get the related contacts and if there's no related contacts, maybe you want the flow to create a um, initial contact or something of the sort. And if it already has contacts, maybe you want to set the status to a certain field, a value. There's many different use cases. Um, you can use this in screen flows, record trigger flows, scheduled trigger flows. Um, it's the same thing. For like a screen flow, this would be useful. Maybe you're creating an account or excuse me, maybe you're updating an account and you want to split out and display a certain screen based on the number of records returned, stuff like that. Um, another way you could technically um, count the number of records returned is you could, instead of having this um, equals count element, you could have a collection variable and use a loop to cycle through all the records returned. And as it goes through, you add a plus one and it would count them up that way. But this is way more efficient than using a loop, especially if you return like 50 contacts, that's going to be 50 iterations that it's counting. Um, and doing this is a lot more efficient. So I would highly recommend using this method. And, um, you know, I've been doing Salesforce admin work for over two years now uh, in the real world. And this is something that I'm using now. Um, and as you learn and grow in your position, you learn new tricks and tools. So this is something um, that I've learned over the past year. Um, this is a great way to count the number of records returned. Now, I wanted to just go a little further in this flow uh, to show you how you could use this with the decision element. So what we're going to do is, is um, I want to add a decision element that checks the number of records returned. So if the number is zero, I want it to branch over here. Um, and if it's more than zero, I want it to branch the other way. So we're going to add in a decision element. Okay, we're going to call this um, more, uh, more than zero records returned. And you can name something way better than what I just named that. We're going to call this yes. Um, I like to call it yes, there is more than zero. So in this case, if the resource of um, count of contacts is greater than zero. I want it to go into the yes side. I'm going to go ahead and change that de um, default outcome to no because I like it clean. And what we're going to do is we're going to save this and we're going to debug it again. Edge communications run. And as you can see, it came down and branched over and went in the yes side because as you can see, count of contacts is two is greater than zero. And in this case, if we had an account that had no contacts, then it would branch over and do the no side. This is a really powerful tool because like I said, there's many different use cases and you may have some specific in your org that you need to do, but this is a great way to count the number of records returned and do different things based on the number returned. And like I said before, if you're doing this with a screen flow, it'd be really useful because you could display two different screens based on the uh, records returned as well, which would be super useful. Um, this is a tool that I use quite often. And actually what prompted me to make this video is I recently used it in a project and realized how not readily available this information was out there in, on Google and YouTube. A lot of people like to loop through things to count them. And it's not super clear that you have to have a number variable um, to be able to get the option to equals count whenever you're trying to count these things. So I wanted to make this video. So if you found it um, very informative, helpful, leave it a like, share it with your friends. Um, I really appreciate that. Also, I just wanted to kind of give a little channel update as well. Um, I'm back to making videos. This is my second one after taking a couple months off. Um, I'm going to be continue making videos. I'm making videos that really interest me, uh, especially tips about flows. That's kind of one of my specialties. Um, and also just tips on some of the certifications. I have, have a video coming out very soon, just updating where I am with studying for my developer certification. Sneak peek, it is challenging, <laughs> very challenging. 
Um, also, if you haven't done so already, I actually have a LinkedIn page for Salesforce Ethan that I created a few months ago. I think we're up to 27 people that are following on there. I tend to just post tips and different things on there. So make sure to give it a follow as well. The link is in the description if you want to check out Salesforce Ethan LinkedIn page as well. Uh, super cool if you want to follow me on there outside of YouTube. But I appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one.